Hi and welcome, thank you for watching. Today I'm gonna to be making a backyard grilled meal for $25 with ingredients that I purchased at Walmart. This is to show you, you can have a nice spread even if you don't have a whole lot of money. I have one other video so far in this series and if you missed that one, I will go ahead and link it down below. And I think that's about it. So let's get started. Let me show you what I've picked up. Today I stopped at Walmart to get our ingredients. Here is what we're going to be using today. We're going to make some Hasselback potatoes with potatoes, three corn on the cobs. I did pick up some true genuine butter. If you wanted to save a few cents, you can always switch to the margarine, but I decided I would rather have butter and it was, it was in my goal. My goal was $25. <laughs> Uh, some real bacon pieces and I picked up a salad kit that way we have dressing and everything included a small tub of sour cream some whipped topping and strawberry jello and our meats for today are a package of drumsticks I went with this free range brand because it was the same price as the other brand and a pack of eye of round steaks so that's what we're going with. My total, as we can see here, oh, that is glary. Let me bring it over here. Was $24.56. I technically could have picked up another corn on the cob, but <laughs> that's okay. So just to show you the spices I have here, garlic and onion, which I usually have. I did pull out paprika and rosemary as well. If you don't have these, don't, don't even worry about it. I don't even know if I'm gonna use them. And if you have seen one of my other videos, you know that I have green onions growing in a pot outside and anyone can do this. You just buy the green onions from the store and plant them in some dirt and they'll, you snip off what you need from the top and they'll just continue growing. 50 cents lasts all summer. If you guys have, you know, little condiment packets, you could use those as flavorings. This process here, you need to start at least four hours before you even turn your turn your fire on. We're going to be brining the chicken. Brining chicken is one of the most economical ways that you can make sure your chicken or any meat is juicy. So I have about three and a half, four cups of hot water and I'm going to put in three tablespoons of salt and two tablespoons of sugar. And I'm gonna give that a stir. At this point, you decide whether you want any other flavors in here that you may have in your cabinet or refrigerator. Uh, some people like to put orange peels in here because that's a pretty good flavor with chicken. I think I'm looking at my spices now. I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of rosemary in there. You actually don't have to put any flavorings and do you remember that the little condiment packets I showed you? If you have condiment packets and you have some soy sauce left, that's a pretty good flavor to put in there. So now I have that dissolved and we are ready to put in the chicken. Keep the skin on. Well, okay, let me put it this way. I keep the skin on in, when I do this process this way. Oh yeah, and technically if your water's really hot, yeah, wait for it to cool down because you don't want your chicken to get cooked. <laughs> it's not that hot. Okay, so now I'm going to put this in the fridge. Like I said, at least four hours, up to 24 hours at the very most. We're going to go ahead and get our dessert started early on also. So we have the strawberry jello packet. It, this, is the, this is the three ounce. You can use whatever flavor you prefer. You also need some dessert glasses or some bowls. And then we will need the Cool Whip, or the Whip Topping. <laughs> we are first opening our packet of Jello, to which we will add about two-thirds cup of boiling water. Not about, exactly two-thirds cups of boiling water. I don't know why I said about. And I'm gonna stir that. The package says for about two minutes. Need to make sure everything is completely dissolved. And now I have one cup of ice water that I'm going to add to this. Let's 
stir that until the ice is dissolved and it begins to thicken up a little bit. All right, mine hasn't thickened up at all yet with that stirring, so I'm going to be sticking it in the fridge for 30 minutes. And then if it's a little, a little bit thicker, then I will add the whip topping into it. But you don't want to let it get too thick. So I'm setting a timer for half an hour and I'll come back and check on it. The jello has thickened up in that half an hour. Now we need to add two cups of the whip topping into it. You don't have to measure it if you don't want to. It would be about two thirds of the container. And then just gently stir it in there. I'm trying to tip the bowl a little bit so you can see. I'm not even being that gentle with it. I'm just kind of whipping it in there. I will end up putting the rest of the whip topping on top of these fluffy jello cups after it, they've become hardened in the fridge. All right, so now we take these glasses and we're going to pour the mixture into them. I'm gonna to try to get it evenly. Oh, there's little specks of the whip topping still in there, but that's okay. Now these are gonna go into the fridge and they have got to be in there for at least four hours. Okay, so with this, with this corn, we're gonna try to carefully pull back the husk. The husk, I'm attempting to fold it, fold it back up. And we are going to be grilling it with the husk on. It does take a while on the grill. It'll take 20, 25 minutes for it to heat throughout. Okay, so now that we have the cob exposed, or the corn cob exposed, we're going to be removing the silks off, the silk off. I have this bowl of water here that we're gonna be soaking our corn in. No, oh, well, first of all, let me just say, we've gotta put the husks back, back on the corn cob now. We're going to be soaking the whole thing for at least 30 minutes. And it's another one of those where if you stick it in there for a couple hours soaking, it's fine. What the soaking will do is it'll help the, um, the husks, the corn husks, to not catch on fire in the grill, on the grill. So it's important to do. Then we're gonna put it in the water and let them soak. And I'm gonna do that with the other two I have left. I don't think this pan is going to work. I think I'm gonna to have to put them in another pan, other, or I have to rotate them forever, which, I mean, maybe I could do that. You'll want to ideally have them submerged all the way. Next, we're going to work on the Hasselback potatoes. I have covered this baking pan in a sheet of aluminum foil, and I have put some oil on it. You can also use cooking spray. Next, I'm going to scrub these potatoes. They're pretty small. Uh, there's eight of them in there, and I'm gonna just go ahead and scrub them. I'm not gonna peel the potatoes. Now, I have five more potatoes here that I am going to peel, and I'm just gonna make those into mashed potatoes. I mean, might as well, we have so many potatoes. I mean, there's still some potatoes left in the bag. Here we have our little setup. I have two knives here. Make sure they're sharp. Uh, I don't know that I'll need to. <laughs> I might be just overthinking it, but you're gonna need a very sharp knife. And then I have these two chopsticks set up here, as you can see, and that is so we don't cut all the way through the potato. 
So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be slicing. Once we get to the center, the chopsticks will prevent us from going all the way through it. Maybe. Hang on, let me get some thicker chopsticks. All right, let's see if these thicker chopsticks will be more useful. I just didn't want to risk cutting my good chopsticks. So I'm being extra careful. But anyway, so the chopsticks are preventing the knife from going all the way through. And that is exactly what we want. And you just want to cut it in thin uniform slices. I don't think there's actually a too thin for this potato. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Oops. That was too thin because that cut right off. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to flip it so I can finish this side of it. So now, as you see, we have here a potato that will be baked crispy all the way throughout. Well, there's that part that I cut all the way off. I'm just going to leave it there. So do this with all of the potatoes and then put it on the baking sheet. After we get them all sliced, we are going to get some oil and butter and spices on them. Now that we have all our potatoes prepped, we are going to be melting one stick of butter. The butter has melted, so we're going to add one fourth cup of oil. And then in this bowl, I have an array of spices, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and paprika. Just a little interruption here of this time lapse, but we are going to want to try to get in between the slices of the potato. This is what's going to help it get crispy all the way. All the potatoes are now greased up and there is still some left so I'm going to hold on to that in case I need to do any more basting as they are baking in the oven. You're going to want to turn your oven on to 400 degrees and when it reaches that temperature these are going to go in for about 50 to 60 minutes. I'm going to get these potatoes peeled and put in this pot with some water to make some mashed potatoes. There's the potatoes. I'm leaving them whole because they are so tiny. <laughs> And I'm just going to cook those until they're soft, probably about 20 minutes on that. I'm not going to turn the heat on just yet. You got to just kind of plan accordingly. When your other potatoes are about halfway done, go ahead and get those mashed potatoes started. Over here, I am. I put the beef on the tray here. I'm only going to salt and pepper it. Here we have our chicken and our brine. I want to get it out of there. I am also going to be rinsing it a little bit. Some people don't like to rinse it. It is entirely up to you. I think that there's a risk of it being a little too salty <laughs> if I don't rinse it. So that's the only reason I'm going to rinse them. To the beef, I'm adding some salt and pepper, just those two. And to the chicken, I'm using salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. This is a sheet pan that's ready to go outside. Um, my husband is getting the grill started. He's in charge of that. Because I'll be running back and forth checking on the food. So we still need to prep the salad, but other than that, we're good to go. So I have just been rotating these. I did not change out the water. Seems to be working okay. Everything is quite soaked. 
I have opened up this salad kit and inside the salad kit it has the dressing looks like cheese and a crouton topping so I am not going to be putting the whole thing together but I do want to put together some of it this is <laughs> this is not a lot of salad okay oh that's not that bad it filled my bowl up oh wow it is really deceiving <laughs> That all they filled my salad bowl up. Oh, this will be plenty to feed us. And it's it, this came with a balsamic dressing. So I'm going to put that on. And then I'm going to wait to put the cheese and the croutons on until it's time to eat. I have about 15 minutes left on my timer for those Hasselback potatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and get these other potatoes cooking for the mashed potatoes. And I'm also going to take a peek at what we look like in here. Whoa, that fogged up the camera. Looking good. I'm going to pull them out. And there's a lot of oil and butter that is in that pan. So I'm just going to flip them and baste them a little bit. We went ahead and foiled the corn because... The husks were charring really quickly. Looking good. The potatoes are done. I'm going to drain them and then mash them with the potato masher. The Hasselback potatoes are also, they are done. So I'm going to pull them out and we will decorate them. But let me get these mashed potatoes done. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to drain them, then I'm going to mash them and I'm going to add some butter, salt, pepper. That's really all I can put in there because I don't have any milk in this budget plan. <laughs> They are really looking good. All right, I'm gonna get some toppings on there so you can see what one of these look like with our toppings. And then I'm also going to show you what you can do if you have some cheese. So we have our potato here. We have our sour cream here and our bacon. So there's also quite a bit of juices, the buttery juices left in the pan. So just run it along your potato, like so. Now, if you have something green, such as chives, or maybe even dill, or the green onions from your garden, which that's what I'm gonna go snip right now. If y'all saw my fried rice video, you've already seen me snip some green onions. I'm gonna go snip some more. Let's go. Here is my green onion plant. What I do is I plant the green onions from the grocery store into my pot of dirt and I just snip off the greens when I need them. There's the green onions. I'm gonna give them a rinse and snip them up. my potato. 
All right, now I'm going to show you an alternative that you can do if you happen to have some cheddar cheese. All right, so if you happen to have some cheddar cheese or whatever cheese you like, what you can do is you can slide it into these potatoes like this. Don't have to put it in between each gap because that would be a whole lot of cheese. Here I've melted a little bit of our butter and there's some garlic powder in there as well for anyone who wants to put that onto their corn on the cob. If they don't want the garlic flavor in it, then by all means we will do just the butter. I have taken the salad back out of the fridge. Uh, where are my tongs at? Here they are. These little ones is what I was using. Give them a stir to get that balsamic vinaigrette mixed in there again. And now it's time to add the cheese and the croutons. That was the croutons and now the cheese. So these packets are around four dollars and they come with the chopped salad, the dressing, I would guess a crunchy topping, <laughs> and a cheese. All in one. There we go. All right, now you can see the cheese has melted in there. So I know this isn't as professional looking as the web pages, but this is reality of what the Hasselback potatoes are going to be. And I think they will taste just fine because I've actually had a few sample pieces. <laughs> There's our food. There's our meal. We have our corn. One, this one has been dehusked. There's the husk on those. Then we have our chicken and our beef. There's our salad complete with dressing and toppings. And then we have some butter if anyone wants to add it to something. Then the bacon bits to add to the potatoes. There was the sour cream, mashed potatoes, our beautiful desserts. Hopefully I remembered everything. There's my amazing potato. That's it for this one. This was a great meal all around. I have no complaints. Nobody had any complaints. The chicken turned out really juicy from being in that brine. The dessert, although very pretty to look at, was a little bit sweet for our palate. We like a happy medium and this was a bit on the sweet side for all of us. Thank you so much for being here for this meal. I will see you in the next one.